Welcome to TheTechSource.tv. My name is Dan. You may find myself in a little bit of a different situation. I'm uh, in my basement having a campfire. It's totally safe. Don't worry. My house isn't going to catch on fire. It's totally safe. Have a campfire in your house. It's really fun. Um, it's being fueled by uh, an old ATI card of mine, but it's not hot enough. Um, you know, as you know, ATI cards don't run very hot or loud or use a lot of power. So I need something that's a power-hungry beast to uh, make this burn a lot better. I think Dave might be a little mad that I'm burning an NVIDIA card, but I think he'll live. So I'm going to put this NVIDIA 8800 GTS on here. There we go. I'll make it a lot hotter. Should be good. Uh, but anyways, what are we here today to do? Well, we're here to review some coolers, and three of them to be exact. I got a thermos cooler, I got two Colvin coolers, electric one, and your classic cooler. And uh, we're going to review those. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to review... Actually, I'm not going to review coolers at all, but I'm reviewing coolers. Just hold on. Okay, so in this cooler, we find a Corsair A70 CPU cooler. Inside my bigger cooler, we find more coolers. We find the Corsair H70 CPU cooler. And finally, what we're here to review today is the Corsair H100 CPU cooler. Apparently, it's the best CPU cooler on the market. We'll see about that today. So as you can see, here's the Corsair cooler. Before we jump into all the results, I'm going to show you a little a brief overview of the cooler. Um, as you can see, that's the pump. It's pretty nice. You can mount four PWM fans into there or four regular fans in there for the three-prong connector. Um, I got four fans mounted onto it right now. There's the uh, adjustable uh, moving mount. And um, as you can see, there's three little white lights. So that's low, medium, and high fan speeds you got there. There's a Corsair digital link plug on there as well. If you want to find out more information about that, please click on the annotation or the link below in the description. We have a video talking about that. Uh, moving on to the rad, you can see the rad's not very thick the cables are quite long on that though the hoses but um, you can mount four fans on it which is great 420 millimeter fans butt to butt and uh, as you can see on a Corsair 600T you have lots of options of mounting it if you have the the uh, mesh side here you can uh, put it right on the side of your case top of your case and uh, anywhere else you really desire um, so it looks pretty it's pretty neatly done and uh, it comes out pretty nice and it, overall it's a nice package and as you can see even though it's mounted on the side of the case you can open the case pretty well and still work on in the inside all right so uh, I'm going to show you uh, what we're doing for the test setup and how we're actually benchmarking this and testing it and uh, all that. So uh, for the coolers, we're testing it again, so then you know actually how good this is. So you have something to really compare it against to. Um, we're going to be using the uh, Corsair H70, as I mentioned in the intro. It's a decent cooler. It works good. Um, I used it for the past year. I really like it, and it was a good setup. And it's, a, it's about the same performance as like a Noctua NH, NHD14. So. If you're looking at some air coolers, that's something you can compare it to. Um, also got the Corsair A70, not the best cooler in the world, but it's a decent cooler for the money, and uh, it works all right, um, but it's a little noisy. And uh, finally, we have the H100, of course, because that's what we're here to review and see if it's any good. Um, in the system, actually, um, some of the fans I use too, a lot of you guys wanted me to test it with Noctua fans. I do have two Noctua, I actually have four Noctua NFP uh, for 12 fans. And um, so I tested push-pull on the rads only. I didn't change any of the fans on the cooler, on the air cooler, because it's just irrelevant, because um, those fans are meant for radiators. So um, we did a, I did a push-pull setup on that, did a push-pull setup on this, and I did uh, single fans on that as well. So only two fans, not four, because the Corsair cooler only came with two, so I tested the Noctua cooler versus, uh, Noctua fans versus uh, the standard Corsair fans and see if there was improvement with the fans, even though they are a lot quieter and move a lot slower. But we'll see when it comes to the benchmark. So that's that's what I did. And for software, I tested for temps. I uh, did all my temp testing with PC Wizard 2010, um, and then I verified it with a couple other software just to make sure the temps were accurate. And to load up the CPU 200 present, I used Prime 95 64-bit. It lo eight, loaded all eight threads. The CPU was running at uh, 2.7 uh, gigahertz, the stock clock for the Core i7 930, and we ran it at four gigahertz on an overclock with hyper-threading on as well, so it produced more heat. At a pretty, it's a pretty decent overclock, so it does produce a lot of heat, and you can definitely notice the difference. And uh, when it does produce a lot more heat, you can really see the difference in the coolers. So at stock clocks, they all produce, they all per, uh, perform about the same. You'll notice, uh, but we'll see. And we're going to go ahead and let's uh, start reviewing this thing with the benchmarks. All right, so I'm still chilling by the campfire, not back at the desk. Um, Trying to keep it relaxed. Anyways, so I got my laptop now. We're going to read off you some benchmark numbers, and it's. Pretty much the most grueling part of any review doing it it's a lot of work it takes a lot of time and uh, but tech source does this for you um so stock fan speeds stock clocks 
Wait, stock fan speeds? No. Low fan speed, stock clocks. A70 does not participate in any of the low fan speed tests because I didn't feel like testing at low, and it doesn't really perform that well on low. So it'd be pretty much pointless. Um, so A70 does not NA. Um, H70, we're looking at 66. Uh, H100, we're looking at 56. Overclocked, low fan speeds, 4 gigahertz. A70, A and NA. H70, we're looking at 79. H100, 69. We're looking at a 10 degree difference. That's pretty big. So that's 10 degree difference on two tests. Now, stock fan speed, stock clocks, high fan speed, A70, first test it's in, 63. H70, 59. We got a decent difference there. H100, 52. So we got a pretty good gap between all these uh, coolers. Now we're looking at overclocked, high fan speeds, and uh, we're running at 4 gigahertz again. A70, 70 degrees, H70, 75, H100, 66. Now we're looking at idle temps. On the A70, on high fan speeds, we're looking at 40 degrees. H H70, we're looking at 39, H100, 35. Now we're looking at low fan speeds, A70, NA, H H70, 41, H100, 42. We got a two, well, one degree difference. Now it depends basically on your setup and things like that. Um, but basically at the stock clocks, can't really do much. Um, most coolers do run about the same. Now, overclocked, idle. Uh, A70 on low fan speeds. NA, H, H70, 44. H100, 45. Now, we got, again, one degree difference even on overclock at idle. So now let's move up to high fan speeds. So, A70, uh, 42. H70, 42 again. And H100, we're looking at 39. So, between the H7, A70 and the H70, we're looking at the same temps, but the H100, because it is bigger, it's going to pull ahead. Now, moving on to the Noctua fans. Noctua fans on idle and push-pull on both of them. So, A70 on, uh, on idle, on uh, under no load, we're looking at 48 degrees. H100, we're looking at 41. Big difference there. Now, Noctua fans under load. 80 degrees on the A70, and uh, we're looking at 65 on the H100. So it cut the temperatures way down. And just just as a to put this in perspective, I put the H70 at stock clocks. It performed still worse than the H100 did at overclocks because the A7 H70 with the Noctua fans at stock at, at stock clocks did 44 on idle and 65 under load that's the same as the h100 under load with the with the overclock that's a big difference so that's our um, wrap up of all our benchmarks we're gonna have a picture over on our website if you really want if you want to go back and look at the chart again um, and we'll have a link in the description there for you so what's the tech source's conclusion on the Corsair h100 cooler well as you can see it's the best performer cooler we have tested today um, it's an amazing cooler for the price. Yeah, it's a little expensive, but if you're willing to fork out just over a hundred dollars, it's something definitely to look look for. If you're into if you're into overclocking or you want a quiet PC setup, this is something to get because the uh, Corsair H100 does have a fan controller built into it. All your fans do plug into the unit, and it makes it super easy for cable management, and it makes it easy to manage all your fans. It has Corsair Digital Link, which is going to be a future. Uh, fan management control system that's going to plug right into it so you can control each individual fan RPM, control the pump, and all that cool stuff. So there's not very many details at the moment, but it does come out. We'll be reviewing that as well with the H100. It's one of the first coolers to use it from them, and it, it's going to be pretty awesome. So um, just a side note, I really, um, I personally think the fans that this cooler comes with are not that great. Um, it would have been better, of course, they did pick some nicer fans. They did feel like good fans coming out of the box. They're a lot better than the fans that came with the H70 but um, they're still not that great. The Noctua fans are still probably your best choice for going for rad fans. You may not like the, the uh, color scheme, but you could paint them if you want. There is uh, some tutorials out there on YouTube on how to paint them, disassemble and all that stuff. I prefer the color scheme with the red LEDs, as I said before in our Noctua reviews and unboxing said the color scheme looks great with red fans, I mean red LEDs. Um, so going on to this cooler, as you can see, it is, it's, a bit, it's a bit thinner cooler than the H70, but that's a good reason. Um, it's not as densely packed, it's not as thick, so it makes a lot less noise. It gets the, it does the, gets the job done a lot better. You might have some issues installing it in a lot of cases because it is bigger, but if you have like a decently sized case that has a two, like a, an area where you can put two fans next to each other side by side, then you can put this in your case. So 
Uh, a lot of MZXT cases will have that set up. Uh, a lot of thermal tape cases will have that. All Corsair cases this will fit in. Um, probably a few Antec cases. A lot of cases will fit this. You just gotta kinda do the measurements first and make sure it does fit. And make sure you have clearance for your motherboard if you're gonna mount it in the case because that's where you're gonna have to mount this. Um, if you do have clearance in the case, just put it in the case and put the fans on the outside of the case. It may look a little ghetto, but you know what? You're getting good CPU temp, so who cares what it looks like? Um, now, what CPU sockets does this mount to? This mounts to all sockets, everything including LG 11, uh, 2011, even mounts to AM, AM3 Plus. So every AMD socket, every Intel socket, um, this mounts to, which is great. Even the 8, H80 will do that too, which is the uh, smaller brother to this and which is the actually the step up from the A70, which we will probably review eventually when we, if we can get our hands on one. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with this unit. It's a great unit. As a push-pull setup, it does even better. As long, as long as you pair it with some good fans and uh, you know what if you're looking into buying a CPU cooler and that's actually is what was designed by a Canadian company um, cool it then this is the cooler to go for